Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brett. Hey, I'm talking, motherfucker. Hello, everyone. My name is Brett. Hey. Hello, everyone. My name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music, and today we're going to be listening to the Wawoka album titled "Unhappy Refrain." Uh, today, I'm met with two guests, um, Legoshi and Peruko. They were here for the Water Parks reaction, and the entire reason why why uh, I was just sent in two albums is uh, hey, no cameras. Uh, the reason I was sent in two albums is because Ned was enjoying the interactivity and really wanted to uh, give these two amazing people, uh, amazing community members, uh, something to listen to and react to with me, which is absolutely amazing. So, um, And on top of that, you guys are actually allowed to enjoy this album because, as I'll show you right here, uh, it's actually critically acclaimed. That's right. So you're actually able to enjoy it. There we go. And by critically acclaimed, I mean the 80 people who've heard it on album of the year. All right, 86 is huge. Now, I've started listening to the first song of this album, and I can say that this album is batshit insane. It is very intense, <laughs> at least from just the first moments I've heard. Uh, but yeah, if you want to give some context to this project, uh, Peruko, go ahead. And I got to change Water Parks fans to uh, Wawoka fans. Uh, yeah, so this is a Unhappy Refrain by Wawaka. It's a Vocaloid rock album. Uh, by the legendary Vocaloid producer Wawaka. Uh, it released in 2011, and it was essentially the first and last studio album by Wawaka before he quit making Vocaloid music and went on to start his band Hitori. It does focus on, like, emotions a lot, I would find, through a lot of its lyrics, especially, like, songs like Rolling Girl and, like, uh... Unhappy and the title track "Unhappy Refrain." The best way, one of the best ways I could describe this album, uh, sound-wise, is with its album cover, which like showcases a like a girl like free falling, like like kind of like free falling in the sky, like and it kind of like showcases just how like fast paced and high energy this album is. It kind of like feels like when you're listening to it, you're just like falling and like you're just falling. And then, like, when the music ends, it's like you've hit the ground. I can say from personal experience, I've heard Swan's albums that have done that exact same thing for me. So how would you compare uh, Wawoka with Swan's? Wawoka's actually good. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited for this. Peruko's been wanting me to listen to this for so long. And, yeah, I'm finally recording and listening to it. And I'm excited to be here with Peruko. What would you have to say but, uh... about uh, what if the image on the cover is falling in reverse what, what would you have to say about that i don't know well there you go ladies and gentlemen <laughs> a quote from peruko i don't know all right and that's all you need to know all right first song is first song unhappy refrain title track the title track is uh the last song wawaka wrote as a vocaloid producer and it kind of explains his frustrations with the Vocaloid scene. Kind of like with the frustrations that come with being a Vocaloid producer. Not really getting the credit that Vocaloid producers tend to get. And with some of the credit, instead of going to a Vocaloid producer, going towards like Hatsune Miku instead, the Vocaloid. And, and it kind of focuses on that frustration in the lyrics. And so I'm going to say that this is the first full Vocaloid project that not only have I reacted to, but just in period have listened to. Um, I've been, so here's my opinion on Vocaloid, and it's one that's shifted a lot, as originally I thought that it was just a really weird and uh, uninteresting way of approaching music with the same sort of vocalist. But my opinion not only has shifted on that, but my opinion on Vocaloid has kind of shifted my opinion on AI and using AI voices in general. It's very important to have some sort of rules and restrictions when you are making music um, and guidelines or whatever. And I don't think that there's anything different with deciding to make something in a Vocaloid style as there is with anything else. Um, very talented Vocaloid producers and artists will make very good Vocaloid music in the same way that someone who's really bad at it will make something really bad, but it works simply as another instrument, uh, one that you're able to uh, literally vocalize and make lyrics out of. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I've, yeah. I've definitely gotten a, a larger understanding of it, even if there hasn't been like a ton of Vocaloid that I've been seeking out or super, uh, I'd say, like interested to listen on my free time. But today, I'm finally going to get to do that. So, you ready to get started? Yes. Here we go. Unhappy refrain. Oh my god, it's, all right, it's a little out there. I was gonna say this is I mean from an instrumental standpoint. 
unbelievably engaging. I mean, wow, the rock elements are fucking unbelievable. Damn. Good production, too. I mean, this is shit, shit pretty good. <laughs> dynamic saying it's too tinny i don't think so at all i actually think that this is uh, a powerful overwhelming and i'd even say because like peruka i showed you money store recently right and you yeah. really enjoyed that and you wouldn't say, like you wouldn't say money stores mixed traditionally very well right no at all but it's effective it. it's so effective it, it, in what it goes very for. very good so that's yeah. kind of the same feeling i have right now it's just everything about this is clashing in a satisfying way I'm your token straight cis white guy. Yeah, not only do I like that, I actually love that. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. That's, wow. It's like... Bruko only introduced me to this album, like, a few days ago, but it's really nice. I like how this kind of just instantly feels like the cover art, with, like, the kind of, like, falling look. It's, like, fast-paced and kind of raw with the production. It feels untamed. It reminds me of some other Japanese music I've heard uh, in the same sort of very intense vein, uh, Melt Banana being an, uh, an example of that where things are very overwhelming but at the same time it's just so well balanced it's so well mixed and it just hits the right buttons for me i think that the vocaloid is i mean i, I it's a big part of here the vocaloid and i think that like early me would not be able to look at it with just a fresh mind but it's like that that rewarding feeling and satisfying feeling of just being able to accept it it's nice and I love that. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a nine for me. I think it's I think it's really that good. I think it's absolutely amazing. Like just top tier sounds all the way through. Bass is unbelievable. I think the drums kick. I, I love the spacing of everything. It's creative. It kept my attention the whole uh, whole way. This is this is actually that's absolutely amazing. I'm really glad you like that song. Damn. Oh my god. That's a great start to this shit, dude. I'm I'm really feeling it. Oh, there we go. Sorry, it's a little awkward. Next song it is Rolling Girl. Not... All right, Rolling Girl. Oh man. Rolling Girl is one of my favorite songs of all time. So this song is a song about a girl uh, who essentially feels hopeless in life. Uh, there's constantly voices like turning in her head. She's basically, basically she's suicidal, right? She tries to go through life by doing something called rolling, which is up to like interpretation as to what Chocolate that means. Starfish! And you know, it this kind of goes on until eventually towards the end of the song, she herself oh shit I yeah click, i won't lie i clicked the star, uh, chocolate starfish button when you said rolling roll and roll and roll and roll and... oh god uh that that took a dark I, I turn i think i actually i i showed like oh she actually a mashup of this song with rolling by limp biscuit it's, last night so. it's really good okay i want send me it on discord it actually yeah. goes hard on like swans says mart uh agree Mart-based. agree you know <laughs> Mark, your name starts with an M. Flip that M upside down, it's a W. But yeah, I love this song. This song actually, like, if I could say a song, if a song can save my life, it's honestly this one. I love it. Oh my god. This thing is so crisp. You know, I think another part of it is, like, I've kind of told myself that if I'm able to get used to Death Grips, then I'm able to get used to this. And I think that that's really helped me just personally with, like, opening up to this and just not really uh, immediately judging it. Yeah. I will say, man, the experience I get from that is actually really, really fantastic. <laughs> you remember crying to this when you were 12? Ma- Chat, uh, mods, can you get rid of them? Can you get rid of them? All right, we don't need any soy boys, any sappy soy boys in the chat, please. Uh, thank you. 
Wait, did someone actually get rid of him? Wait, I was joking. Bring him back. Guys, wait, did someone actually get rid of him? You know, I actually like that better than the last one. I, I like... Just in terms of, like, the sound, it was filled out, it was powerful, really emotional. I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you. I yeah. thought that that was, that was brilliant. Like, that was really good. Like, uh... Is it, what would you give it? Uh, eh, maybe. I'm feeling... Okay. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna lie. I'm. Uh, I'm. I think I'm just as shocked as you are. But at the same time, it's so technically proficient. It's so beautiful on the ears. It's really. It's powerful. Even without hearing the words, I feel like I'm able to follow along and understand. I feel like the context you've given Peruko has really helped with that. Um, I like uh -oh. better the people using the anime emotes. And just kind of intense, and yet at the same time, there's like a really pretty elegance and like uh, yeah, uplifting feel well, to it. The way you're putting it, pretty elegance. It, it does. It feels very elegant. Like everything just lines up. Like it just makes perfect sense. And then at the same time, it's like done at the most technically proficient level, where it's just like such an overwhelm. Um, yeah, I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> I'm so happy you gave that song a ten. Oh my god, it's really good, dude. I, I, I literally, I love that. I, I'm. Shocked at just how fucking good that was. Play the mashup? All right, yeah. Did you send the mashup? Now this gets my seal of approval. Why is it good? It actually kind of goes hard. If it does. Fucking butt sex. Yeah, that's an 11 out of 10. If the original is a 10, then that's an 11. All right? It, it's so good. And oh, if the wow, original Brad, is 11, that's a 12. Okay? I'm wow. just saying. Brad admits that the original rolling by Limp Bizkit is a 10. You heard it here. Hey, 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 hey. Don't misinterpret, misinterpolate my words, okay? Dollar building blocks, move on. I'm going to be quite honest. I don't know the meaning of a good amount of these songs because it's kind of hard to translate the meaning when, uh, you know, when there's a language barrier. But I thought you listened uh, to Mori Calliope. What do you mean you don't uh, speak Japanese? I'm sorry. I haven't picked up my textbooks yet. You want to? You want to? You want to do it with me? We I, can learn together. You know that would actually be a funny stream. I would learn Japanese with you. I would do that. We can learn Japanese together. That would actually make for some really funny content. It's just a really good song. That's right. the most I can say about all these songs, honestly. I'm not as good as the uh, talking as like she is. So. Oh. Oh, that's clean. Wait, why is this album not on Spotify, but the Roman remix is? Is that true? Dude, this bass is fucking dragging into a new world, dude. Apparently, Singer falls apart as sort of a marionette to the other things she regurgitated from others. Oh, I get it. Dude, this is the craziest group. This sounds so good. Ruka, I know you said this album was going to be good, but I didn't expect it to actually be this good, bro. I was with you it was going to be good. You nah, were nah, 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 nah. You nah, were nah. like, 
You're like, what is this Japanese anime stuff you're Whoa, putting on Whoa, I me? never said that. That is Cap. That is actual Cap, okay? What is this Japanese anime stuff? I this would... Mori bro, Calliope thing is bro. trying to push on me. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, this is not true. Solid Building Blocks, it, it's surprisingly third song in a row that I think lives up. It's a, it's, it's a nine for me. Like, solid nine, nine plus. I think that sounds unbelievable. The groove is amazing. I like someone's explanation of this song that kind of leads to... Uh, what the what the title is inferring of trying to build up not being yourself and then all of a sudden things unraveling I mean, but again that groove is just unbelievable uh, This song is one of the hardest to translate but it's essentially about being someone uh, someone being so paralyzed by regret They eventually every semblance of personality falls apart. Yeah, I mean shit man pretty good Hey, it's this is pretty good. I, I ain't gonna lie this. I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling this uh, legacy What are you thinking so far? I think it's really good. I find that the album like has like a really cohesive and consistent sound that it sticks to it doesn't like deviate from that much but i feel like that's probably a strength because it just keeps building and each song is like a variation and adds like its own bit of emotional flair that kind of is like the diversity that makes the experience so like enthralling that's based as fuck that's a really good that's that's good good insight all right next song my talent anything to say uh Peruko? uh all right, my talent. Let's go. I feel like so far this album's using uh, Vocaloid is like it, it's humanizing it, but at the same time, um, man, especially when you're making something about stuff that's this dark, you know, to have something that's so robotic and cold and uncanny in a way, I feel like is a, is actually it makes like perfect sense. It's another yeah. reason why I feel like it's so easy to just accept the Vocaloid and not like try to be like, uh, ooh, the music's good, but ooh, ooh, the vocals, ooh, it's more like, damn it, this, this shit kind of a full experience right now. Ooh, the Miku. Ooh, yeah, it's good, but ooh, the Miku. <laughs> this one's directly about isolation. She cannot love, she wishes she could, but she can sing. First time donating here, never thought I'd see the day you react to Vocaloid, let alone this album. Thank you for the fids over the years. Of course, thank you, Sailor Rose. Pause, sorry. Fantano gave the new Metallica a five. I I predicted that, honestly. If if, if we're talking about, like, just straight... I, I knew he was going to give it a five. You know why? Because it literally is music made for Roblox concerts. Like, just straight up. So... <laughs> It literally is Metallica. Uh, ugh, that's how review starts. My experience with that Metallica album is I listened to it and I was like, it's okay. But I used that bit on their website where you can generate a version of the album cover that says anything you want so many times that now the actual cover just looks wrong to me. Because I made it say like, gay sex in Metallica fun 15 times. I, I made it say Jesus, Jesus, Japanese, and it's literally the hardest thing it's that, that I've ever seen. I apparently I need to show you guys something. Oh my gosh! Hi, Tina. Tell Tina I say hi. You got a felony. You got a felony. Man, your road looks tough ahead, going miles and miles away from your bed. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking dancing with that too. <laughs> Wait, I have a related video. All right, we gotta actually listen to the album. You know, I'm supposed to be doing a stream later. The fuck is this? Oh. Apple of bottom jeans. A boots with the fur. That sounds more like Michael Bublé than anything. All right. <laughs> 
I was just, I probably need to turn this down like a smidge. DJ Khaled, we the best! Who we know? Yo, is Tim Hecker in the chat? Damn, it just has an abrupt ending. I like that. So, yeah, a lot of these songs kind of have very similar sound palettes, but I've got to say, man, each one of them is just very well paced. It's smart in the way it goes about it. I like hearing the interpretations and chat of each of these songs. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I, I think I like the other ones a little bit better, but not by much. Smiley Ball, I still think it's like a light nine for me. Uh, I think it's amazing. Yeah, I, I like how overwhelming the drums are, the bass just, again, kicking ass, and the mixing being just so overwhelming and... I think in a very good way. So yeah, you are making me so happy today. I see. Here's the thing: is like I showed you the money store, and I, I mean, I didn't expect you to like it as much as you did. But bro, this shit. I mean, wow. This this actually is that good. It's it's so good. Like it's so. I mean, this is this is amazing. Like this is this is this is living up to the hype for sure. Next song. No, uh, I, I. What were you saying? Oh, yeah, I, I just really love this album, I was going to say again, because, yeah, it, it just makes me really happy to see you and Joanna. A Usual Life and the Earth's Frame. Are there other vocaloids rather than Hatsune Miku? Yeah, Kanye West and Drake. Um... <laughs> Bro, oh, that guitar solo in my, in my right ear, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> DJ Kelly! No, I agree. I'm excited for when uh, when the AI voices finally start getting sentience and they're able to record music on their own without uh, the need for human involvement. Uh, very excited for that. Oh, no one actually asked that in chat? Oh. I put the new forges on the cheap. She's Ray Collins! A Usual Life in the Earth's Frame is one that had a lot of unique elements to it, specifically the solos. Um, yeah, and I like the energy of this one. I um, think it lived up to the other ones. Smiley Ball. Absolutely loving the experience. Yeah, this is a uh, really good track, too. Well, interesting fact about this one. This was actually uh, one of the songs they've covered uh, as their band, Hitori, later on. And uh, was actually one of the reasons why one of the band members got interested in joining the band. Yeah, he heard this song and wanted to join Milwaukee's band because of that. And really wanted to play this song as a part of him. Yeah, shit, I, I, I don't blame him. I mean, the, this, this again, the technical proficiency is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of flavor, so I'm enjoying it. Next song, Palm. I, I don't know a lot about these songs, because, uh, yeah, there is a language barrier. It sucks. Oh, you say the song sucks? The song sucks. No. You say it sucks. That's what you said. No. That's your description no. of the song. So 
Did you just say sue your homie? Hold on a second, okay? I cannot get behind that messaging. Unfortunately, I'm suing you, Brad. No, well, we're not homies. You know, we're only doing this for business. But you know, I thought we had something special. Nah, sorry, nah. You're, I'm, you're just another stepping stone in my career. It's okay. You can cope with Legoshi, who's also a stepping stone in my career. Is that all our <laughs> ex-military listen listening group party was? Yeah, you get just the Alma Seven. Stone? So at that point, I was like, yeah, I'm never really going. Whoa, whoa, relate. whoa! You're leaking my score before I even reviewed it. Now, yeah, that's right. I did that. I went that far. Damn. All right, fine then. I'll find something to leak from you then. Good luck. All right, I'll like be here when you find number. it. Okay, I'll be here. His social security number is. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh. oh hold on, you guys. I see that reference, Sean. I really like the change of pace on this one. I feel like it was necessary in this album. It just feels really nice, just change. She give me top note twenty one pilot. Yeah, she give me top note twenty one pilot. <laughs> I'd love to hear a whole album with the TikTok lady's voice. I think that's the next step. Sucks that most of these songs aren't on Spotify. I do agree. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit of an inconvenience. It does feel good listening to direct rips, though. I will say. It is, it is really unfortunate that this album uh, isn't on streaming yet. Because it's, I mean, I'm really enjoying this shit, and I thought that song was also amazing, Smiley Ball. Um, yeah, possibly one of the best so far, with just like such a beautiful framing of everything. Like, I just, I don't know, man. It took me to another world. It was, it was super immersive. I thought the use of Vocaloid there was one of the most impressive so far on the entire album. Um, yeah, and just instrumentally, it just feels like I'm floating on a cloud. So, uh, yeah, absolutely love that. Uh, yeah, I mean, so far this album is pretty good. Let's hope it continues like this. Next song, I, I won't let people, you through. I see people asking why uh, this album's not on Spotify and such. I, I don't know exactly why. This is kind of just my theory. I just know, like, the label behind this album has disbanded, and the artist behind it has passed away. So it's kind of in a weird limbo state right now. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of disturbing to think about. Yeah, there you go. Probably because it's not mainstream. Well, I mean, I guess you can feel cool for owning a copy of this, which I got from Peruko, who uh, illegally downloaded it off the dark web. Okay, so good luck finding it. All right. I, it was literally my own CD. Or that. <laughs> Next song, I Won't Let You Through. So clean. I'm usually the first to argue about things being too clean, too precise, you know, in like a bad way. But like, man, this is just so polished. There's so much care and so much love put into like every single movement and decision. This is really remarkable. <laughs> I want you like that through my heart. Yeah, no, what do you mean? Miku was at Coachella. Miku was uh, with the Tupac hologram. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have closed out of that. Anyway, Smiley Ball, I love that. I also thought that that was one of the most immersive. And someone's saying that it's like uh, they're using well tuned as a way of putting it. Yeah, I agree. I think that the tuning on that is unbelievable. Yeah, wow. Well, tuning is actually a uh, common phrase used in the Vocaloid scene to. Shut up, Peru. No how. one asked. I'm just going to keep going. Refer how to like people use like a vocaloid because if you know, listen to like different vocaloid producers, you can find that they actually, even if they're using the same vocaloid like Miku, 
you can find that they actually make Miku sound like very different than other p producers. And that's due to how they will tune him, tune her. And it's actually really great. I actually really love how Wawaka tunes Miku. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds clean as all hell. Like, yeah, it's very clean. The tuning's great. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Next song, Line Art. Uh... I was going to say that I really like how like the super rapid pacing across this album kind of has this feeling where it's like suffocating and yet comforting at the same time because there's all these like melancholic and sad themes being expressed even when you can't like understand the words due to the language barrier there's this like very emotive kind of vibe and it feels like the really frantic paced music just sort of like creates this like contradictory yet cozy environment in which you take comfort in the melancholy that's happening i completely agree and my i'd say my thing that i would put in is that it feels like it beats you down so heavily like with the instrumentation like it it feels like um it's like an emotional just gut punch with just like overpowering drums and everything like it kind of wears you down <laughs> So line art is completely different from the rest of these songs in, to in terms of tone and feeling, and I really like that, um, but it still kind of has that overwhelm to it. Uh, yeah, I thought that the formula of this and the creativity of it is up to par with everything else. It's smiley ball for me. I thought it was extremely good. Um, it has like this suffocating feeling. I'm going to lie. Really I completely loved. forgot I was on call with someone. That song, I, that song like hello. drowned me and then Tina showed up and then like you start talking. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Hi, I'm here. That song, like, felt suffocating in such a good way. Yeah. You know? It was kind of funny. I made, I made that point before playing this song about the kind of, like, chaoticness being comforting. Because this song, I think, maybe more than any other exemplifies that. You just kind of feel like you're being wrapped up in this, like, blanket of sounds that is scary and sad, yet at the same time familiar and welcoming. And you at least feel like you know where you are. Whatever he said, I was listening to Tina. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you were speaking facts like this, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, next song, Two-Faced Lovers. Uh, okay, so Two-Faced Lovers is a song about, like, uh, unhealthy relationships, like, and, like, a d difference between, like, love and, like, lust, that sort of thing. This immediate thing st sounds like a race, racing game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't make a comment about Boom. car commercials because of that. <laughs> you need a truck that's built off like you. This one's really disoriented, I like it. Yeah. Be they it? Go by it? I think that was one of my favorites on this album so far. Um, especially with understanding that it is about, like, toxic lovers in a way, right? It just sounds like yeah. chaotic running back and forth. Um, yeah. Yeah, I honestly, I love like, it. I'm feeling... Falling into, like, toxic relationships and all that sort of stuff. It's so good. Oh. 
Yeah, I think that that had everything for me. That just, it, it clicked, you know? It just, like, all the pieces lined up. It made perfect sense. It was one of the most creative sounding of the entire album. Um, I think the arpeggiator sounded amazing. The synths were beautiful. The I, I love the effects going on with the Vocaloid. That is, honestly, just one of the most satisfying of the entire project. And I, I absolutely love that. So, yeah. No no shame giving that the bowl. Next song in the gray zone. Uh, here we go. Oh my gosh, you gave it a 10. I'm so happy. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that uh, iPro. Someone already did all the heavy lifting for you, and that someone was Ned. <laughs> so, oh, man, that was good. I like that one a lot as well. Um, it's another one that I feel like I just got lost into, perfectly produced. Love the instrumental, just huge smiley ball. I'm, I'm just floating with this project. I feel like up to this point, considering we have four songs left, and I think everything up to this point is just so fucking good, I, I can't really imagine this thing tanking, so... Yeah, I'm just kind of yeah. for the ride. No, it's I'm, such a good album. I'm shocked at just how fucking good this album is. I mean, just like, wow. Like, even up to this point, the fact that I'm not bored of it yet, you know? Next song, Out of Step. Oh my god, is this a Pink Floyd song? DJ Khaled, we the best! Who? We the These curves are fucking crazy. Oh my god. We are number one. My ADHD is so happy at this shit, dude. I think Out of Step is simple but incredible. It's a smiley ball for me. It, it sticks to a certain sound that just is pure gold, doesn't let go of it, does all it needs to do with it, and makes me very happy. This is quite great. Yeah. No, I think our I think our ADHD really. I think this is just an ADHD album because you know I think I have ADHD too. I do have ADHD actually, and like uh, like I love this thing. I'm gonna make you listen to uh, Melt Banana Candy Gun. At some point, I, it, it's like if you like this and you like Death Grips, like you are going to fucking love that album. It's we, so we got to do it. Then. We got to yeah, do it. Yeah, we'll do that offline. We got to make. We'll do it offline. We got to make a time. We'll do it. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Next song, Reversible Doll instead of Doll of Building Blocks. Now it's Reversible Doll. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Stop it, stop it! Oh my god. Thank you, Shy. Doll, is that a Melanie Martinez reference? Timothy returns. So damn catchy, dude. Dude, these songs are so fucking good. What the hell, dude? 
The song was um, that was amazing. That was such a roller coaster of emotions. It's so overwhelming throughout the entirety of it. It's so fast paced, but yet at the same time, the piano, the grooves, the the catchiness, like everything's there. It's so calculated. It's so well thought out. It's just amazing. I mean, it's a smiley ball. I mean, this this shit is amazing. We're even approaching by the end of the album here. I mean, they, these songs live up. They they stand up against even my favorites on this album so far it's 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 quite remarkable uh, yeah i'm glad you're liking it <laughs> i'm glad world's end uh dance hall world's end dance hall so uh the song uh it's the lyrics are kind of open to like many interpretations and there have been like many interpretations to what people think this one means uh a popular interpretation to this song is that like it's about like two lovers like at the world's end and they're kind of like dancing together and eventually like commit suicide together at the end of the song. Oh my god, it's so good! DJ Kelly! Yeah, that was uh, just as unbelievable as many of the other songs here. It's a strong smiley ball. I'm glad to hear. I'm just kidding. It's, a 10. it's probably one of my favorite tracks, okay. honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is as remarkable, as dense, as satisfying, as brain twitchy as I could possibly ever ask for. It's quite unbelievable. I've, I'm just, I'm surprised at how much this album has lived up to the hype. Because it's just been such a fun listen. Like, we're at the last track right now, and I feel like I've just gone through something amazing. You know, I've, yeah. I've, I've been it's, loving it's, this. It's a ten. It's kind of oh like one God. big song that keeps evolving and flowing. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Evolving and flowing, like it's keeping to the same, like you said earlier, like there's a certain sound palette to it, but it's just changing and moving in a way that keeps it interesting and engaging all the way through. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Final song, Prism Cube. I must try away again Through the storm, through the wind You know, this is the first song in the album. I'm not crazy about the sound of the vocals. I'm muted. Oh, I'm muted. I'm fucking muted. Damn, my bad. Anyways, this song is a light smiley ball. I think it's the worst one so far. Um, reason being is I just feel like it's not as satisfying in terms of sound, but it still works as a decent closer. And it's one of those that's like, it's just the tuning isn't as sad. Like, like it just doesn't work as much for me. It doesn't feel like this was given either the same love as the other tracks, or maybe it's just a bit of a pace killer, but... I just feel like it wasn't as um, as incredible of an ending as I was expecting. Um, Wawoka, uh, Wawaka, I mean, um, Unhappy Refrain. This album is quite incredible. It's actually really impressive on a technical level. And the thing that this came out, what, 2011? I mean, that yep. is also just unbelievable. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, I'd say, rock album, uh, electronic uh, blend album as well too. The piano is fucking insane. The the guitars, everything about this is just tuned so well. Um, yeah, and I loved it. I I absolutely loved it. Uh, for me, it's a solid nine. Uh, yeah. I'm so happy you watched this so much. Yeah. So. so oh my god. Your, your review is gonna be nuts. Yeah, I got I'm thinking of what I've got to type. Let me see. I I'm like actually. I give like... the album an eight. It's so beautiful. Honestly, it's just really entrancing. Oh my gosh, it gave it a 95. Holy fuck. Oh, uh, Pruko, someone in chat was mentioning, by the way, about sending Unknown Mother Goose to Brad, because that's the only post-album Wawaka Vocaloid track. So, yeah, it's, like... it was his... It's, he released it, like, a, a few years after quitting Vocaloid uh, in 2017. Uh, and it was kind of like him looking back on his time 
uh, with Vocaloid and kind of having a sense of appreciation for it, for giving him a, a voice. Oh, I'm just really <laughs> I love this album so much. It really is like a just super elegant and just gorgeous experience. I totally get why it means so much to you. Even like with like the language barrier that you mentioned before, it's so apparent just how like emotive and honest this whole record feels. This album is incredibly, or this album is so technically impressive it can turn the most skeptical people into Vocaloid believers. This album's incredible, and please give it a shot if you're afraid of weebs. It goes so beyond the typical label people give to this kind of shit. The pro the production and arrangement is unreal. That's uh, that's that's my uh, review. So yeah, it lived up to the hype. This thing is just magic. I mean, it's so oh man, like it's so effective is the word I put. It's so effective, like. Man, it, it really shows that, like, it doesn't matter what coat of paint. You know, you get someone who's this passionate about something, they could, they could turn anything into a, into a pure magic. So this, this, this was a remarkable listen. Really, like, we get so a round of here. applause yeah. for Peruko, by the way, like, from chat and everything, just for making this so, like, compelling and fun to listen to. Yeah, thank you. And Peruko, I mean, I wouldn't have listened to this if it wasn't for you. So a huge thank you for this. I mean, I'm shocked at just how much I love this. I mean, it is... I mean... I, I kind of want to, I mean, one thing I've told, I told Legoshi this a few days ago, but, like, uh, this album, like, genuinely means a ton to me, and, like, it, I, I, it genuinely helped me a lot, definitely when I was in a dark place, and I, like, one thing I wish I could, was able to do was, like, thank the artist behind it, like, Wawaka, for making music that genuinely helped me, but unfortunately, it's kind of impossible to do that now. Uh, so what I want to do instead is try to spread this album to other people and like show them just how amazing it is. And I'm glad I was able to do that. Thank you for showing it to me the other day. In fact, being able to be here now and give it a second listen so soon afterwards has only made me appreciate it even more than I did the other night. So, yeah. Thank you everyone for watching uh, this Thank this reaction. Watching. Uh, Wawoka or Wawaka. I said it backwards. God damn it! I ruined it. Anyways. Uh,